there, welcome to my video on how to create interactive content in h5p.org. Uh, this specific content type in h5p.org is called the course presentation. And if you're looking for different ways to deliver interactive content and create interactive content, H5P is a great resource, not only because everything is open source, it's also HTML based, requires zero coding, and it's pretty easy to use such as drag and drop. Uh, the other advantage is that you don't need to learn any expensive or very um, high end software, and you can use this to create simple but very effective and uh, very engaging interactive content. So let's just, uh, for example, say I want to create um, for my course on fashion uh, to teach people how fashion has evolved uh, from the 80s until now. So if I'm looking at it from a historical lens, I want to uh, create a course presentation to sort of go through different slides, go through different images, and to just show the evolving trends. And this is a great tool because there's so many different ways that I can take advantage of this. So uh, I'm just going to pull up an image uh, to start out with and pull up an image from my computer. And just, uh, this is no, by no means um, the most accurate reflection of fashion in the 80s. I'm just giving some examples here. So uh, the image is loading and then I just wanna give it some text and say skirts, um, just so that when um, someone is clicking over the image that the uh, word skirt comes off. And then if I want to hover, I can just say denim skirt. And this is to say denim skirts uh, were popular in the 80s. And then I can display this comment and then just make sure everything, uh, the copyright, if there's any copyright, and just say um, denim skirt, vintage denim skirt and just say copyright uh, gene pack, because those are the name. You'll see I'm the author from 1990. Um, and then source, you know, HTTP. And just list the website from which I just list Google and just say license undisclosed. But just make sure wherever you uh, found a photo from, if you're using it in your course, that you attribute it and avoid any uh, liabilities for copyright infringement. So if that's good, then I just want to hit done. And so this photo is great. I think I do want to edit it and uh, flip it around. Um, make it a little bigger, but also I have to also um, let's see 40 and 260 to see if I can flip. Okay, it doesn't flip it there. I have to find some other way to flip it around. Uh, let's see, I think. Okay, anyways, it doesn't matter, but this is just sort of one way you can say, and then I can also um, add a link to say, check out WW uh, Vogue Fashion Timeline, and then attribute to Vogue.com. And if I want to add any comments, great, but if not, done. And just say that I got this from uh, the Vogue fashion, Vogue.com fashion timeline. And this is a great way, instead of just presenting a bunch of images, it has some text and it has some context. And if I want to take it a step further, I can add some audio. And let me see if I can, it takes a while to load. And the point is just to make it as, you know, fun and exciting, anything to sort of um, make this lesson more exciting and enjoyable for your student. So I can see, I don't know if I have an audio source, but I can definitely look on my computer and see if I have any MP3s. Um, oh, there. I can insert this. I don't know if they take WAV files, but oh, I think they do. <clears throat> this is great. So, so they take WAV and they take MP3s, just make sure it's less, no more than 16 megabytes. And then you just want to, um, decide what the layout is, full, minimalistic, or translation, uh, transparent. And then I don't check autoplay because sometimes you never know where students are watching your course or listening to your course, and it may not be suitable to always have autoplay on, so to allow that student to have the choice whether to play your audio file or not. And then click done, and then now I can see that this uh, they can click on this uh, sound where I can narrate this timeline for the student. And then 
So this is one uh, image. And if I want to continue again, I can add a new slide. The idea is to continue on with this timeline and present a um, history of fashion in the 80s. I'm going to continue looking for some interesting photos. Let me see. Like I said, this is just for example and demo purposes, not necessarily accurate of fashion in the 80s because uh, clearly fashion has evolved. Um, and I'll just say uh, uh, fashion in the 80s. Uh, this is more of a vintage. Um, and then just the idea is really simple. It's very just drag and drop and place context Again, I can add audio, I can add the same audio, or I can just say youtube.com and just insert the audio there. And then scroll down and click done. And then make sure people can see that there's an audio file here. And yeah, when you're clicking on it, know that you can watch, you can see this image and hear a narration about this specific image to hone in on the lesson further. So then I can decide, well, two slides is really enough. I would definitely recommend an optimal of five slides. So I then add another photo and pick one from my computer and just have fun building this because it's obviously, it's a, per, it's a, it's a process and it takes time, um, but really think through how um, this delivery of content can really engage your students, can really make them excited, make them want to learn, and make them really curious about how else uh, you can present fashion in the 80s. So let's just say I picture another sample picture and can say fashion in the 80s. And if I want to make some comments, I can, but I'll just keep this simple for demo purposes. Add an audio file. Or even, I think it's great to even link it. The only challenge with linking an audio file is that it takes a little bit more time. It can slow down the loading process because it has to uh, grab the file from an external website. But it's also really effective and really useful because you're not just watching a picture and reading notes, but you're hearing things. So it's just tuning to people's different sensory cortex and really uh, maximizing the different parts of the brain. So now I have uh, three different slides. I would say optimally it's best to do five, but just for demo purposes, I'm just gonna create three. And then check on the settings. Um, and these settings are sort of, if you don't really know what they mean, um, then I would just leave them alone because you don't want to uh, activate a setting that you don't know and then confuse or uh, make something happen to the slide that confuses your student. Um, but here's what's cool is that you can also link to a Facebook page or a Facebook quote, and you can uh, display a Twitter or a share icon so that if they really like this content about how fashion was in the 80s that you delivered, uh, they can share it online and show people what creative ways that you've done to make this lesson more engaging and more exciting. So if you like that, I would add this, and then you can just take the current URL and just you know insert your Twitter handle, Twitter link, and just um, really, Take it a step further. And then when you're done, click Save. And while it's saving and loading, uh, once this is done, uh, then the next step would be to grab the link, uh, which I'll show you in a second step. Once it's done loading, grab the link and then embed it into your Thinkific site. So I'm just going to wait for it to finish loading. And so now, as you can see, it is done loading and you can see my timeline will comprise of three slides, one, two, three, and they each have um, an audio and a video component. And you can add the text, I didn't really fill this out, but that might be something for you to consider. And then when you want to embed it, just take the embed link and then copy this into your multimedia, into Thinkific, and there you go. I hope this was great. Uh, for you and enjoy the lesson and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.